All right, good evening, guys. Welcome to the 10th video of our Trader 101 series. In this video, I will be teaching you guys how to get set up with your charts. Okay, this includes trading view and exactly what you're looking for and the essential stuff you really need to have on there before you get started. Um, trading view is an extremely important tool that I, I would say all traders need to have. Like, I, I really don't think there's a really, really good alternative that does everything that trading view does. So, uh, if you plan on taking this seriously at any level, you really have to have trading view. So let's go ahead and dive in there. Um, give you an idea what we're looking at. So like this right here is what a lot of traders use, like, like normal beginner traders. They look at this chart and they try to make something out of that. That's like, there's nothing here, guys. Like um, a lot of people who try to use the charts that are on the actual interfaces of the exchanges, it just doesn't give you enough information to even make any sort of rational decisions. So um the the uis are generally really really bad so what you do is you go into trading view chart out make your price predictions go out there understand your support levels and then you take that information go on to, onto your actual exchanges and place your bids and sells based upon what trading view charts tell you okay so like um instead of using this i would go to this and understand where my supports and resistance levels are. And based upon that, I would go back into my exchange and place my bids accordingly, right? So I can notice that this breaker right here is probably gonna provide some resistance. So I would have had a sell at this level, right? Or that a sweep of the monthly open was likely. So I would place a bid there so that it would get bought up, right? Th those are things that you're looking at. And if you don't have this sort of information and all you have is this, you can't make any sort of predictions. So TradingView is essential. So how do you get it? Fortunately, it's free. The free version is not bad for a beginner trader. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I really, really, really would appreciate it if you go ahead and use my, uh, my referral link down here at the bottom. So open the description. It's right there. If you're on Facebook, go to the guide section of my Facebook page right up here. And then uh, go to the tools of the trade. Right down here, you have trading view. Now, there's also a lot of other really important information down here, other things that I use. Uh, the ones I really want to point out are a coin, accounting, acquainting, acquainting. Yeah, there it is. Acquainting is what I use to track all of my portfolios into one single spot. So if I have wallets all over the place, different exchanges or whatever, this keeps track of everything for me in one spot. And then um, whenever it's time for tax season, if you're new to crypto, you'll know this soon enough. I promise you, taxes are pain in the butt for crypto. So if you have this program, it will generate all the reports for you. Um, it's really, really awesome. I definitely use it. It saves me I can't even imagine how many hours it would take me if I didn't use an app like this for my taxes. So a coin is a good one. And then obviously all the exchanges you want to use, they're all in there, guys. Like just check out the, the description, pick the ones you're, you're interested in, but I really would appreciate if you use mine. So once you're into, uh, uh, once you are into uh, your trading view app, there's a, there's a few different options, right? So you have the basic, the pro, the pro plus and premium. I have the pro plus, um, I think it gives me a ton of stuff on there that it makes a lot of sense for me. So I like having a lot of indicators. I like having a lot of charts. Um, all this stuff really does add on. Now, I always buy during Black Friday because or the uh, Cyber Monday sale. So they have an incredible Cyber Monday sale every single year. So I always do the annual plan on Cyber Monday. I spend, a, you know, like a couple hundred bucks and I get it for the entire year. It's awesome. I don't know if you guys have the ability to do so because Cyber Monday is still a long ways away. And with the way the market's going, I would want to get, you know, what you need now. Um, that being said, the basic plan does have a decent amount. You're going to be limited. Uh, just understand that it depends upon how much you trade, how serious you are. You may want to go ahead and upgrade to the pro, but the basic is not too bad to get started with. Okay, but please use our referral link. I really would appreciate it. So let's dive in and see what TradingView does. So here's the front page of TradingView. Um, as you guys see, it's a lot of stuff on here that I, I think they try to uh, try to modify it based upon what you generally like. I'm not really sure about that. But the main thing I want you guys to notice is you have this section over here. Uh, if you go up here, this is your watch list. Your watch list is the thing that you I'm really going to focus here on. So on this watch list, I have several things here, right? 
because I've been building it over you know last while. And I'm gonna update this real quick. There we go. All right, cool. Now it's all organized so I can see it properly. I keep adding stuff and taking away things all the time. And on this watch list, these are all the different things that I am watching, right? That's what a watch list is for. And if I go over here, I can actually, uh, I have an active list and a watch list. These are how I separate out uh, which coins I'm actually trading right now and which ones I want to get in the future. So if I go over here, I can see the ones that I want to get in the future. And if I go over here, I can see all the trades I'm currently in right now so that I can basically know as a snapshot how am I doing. Well, Bitcoin's crashing, so yay, I'm doing fantastically well today, right? Awesome. It is what it is, guys. Like, you know, you win some, you lose some. Today, I guess I'm losing money. That sucks. Well, don't worry. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, I'm still up plenty for the year. I'm fine. Uh, let's go back over. Um, so these are the actual watch lists I have set up. I have my technicals charts, which are all the important ones that give me a snapshot of what's going on. So I have my Bitcoin dominance chart, my shorts chart, my longs charts, total to total Ethereum dominance, XRP dominance. If you've been watching my guide series, you know what this is. If you watch my market updates, I show you every single day how I use these charts. These are essential, I believe, for any sort of, uh, if you are a serious altcoin trader or even Bitcoin, for instance, if you trade the crypto market, you really need to know what's going on in these charts. I think it's very, very important. Um, now, Again, if you're watching my series, you know you have USD pairings, you also have Bitcoin pairings. I have them separated out. I think it makes it easier for me to have them more separated out. Um, so I have my USD right here. And you can see I have several charts. There's a few reasons for that. One, I can have different charts and patterns and all that stuff on different charts, depending on what time frame I'm looking at. Um, it also lets me see different exchanges because each exchange has its own uh, its own market right every exchange is different we talked about that before as well right so um i like to go on and make sure that all the exchanges are lining up with the amount of volume it has maybe different exchanges have different wicks on there or whatever right and sometimes that if if one of the exchange has some massive wick that interferes with my entire plan or uh and it only appears on one exchange i don't want to make an exchange or a, a plan that incorporates that wick into my uh, patterns. And I promise you this will make sense when we get to that point. Just be patient with me, I promise you guys. So the point is I have a lot of different coins on here. All these uh, all these trade onto either US dollar or US tether, like we talked about, or going to the Bitcoin pairing, right? The Bitcoin pairings are super, super, super important. I even have some big, uh, Ethereum pairing because you can actually trade based upon uh, as a pairing of Ethereum as well. So those are all options for us. So, um, but yeah, Bitcoin pairings, ton, ton, ton here, right? And then over here, I just have a random one. Anyone who asks me to chart something, I'll just throw them in here and then I'll chart it and then give it to them and it's, it's out of my way, out of sight, but also monitor it for them. So, you know, whatever. If they want me to follow it, I'll, I'll, I'll give them some charts or whatever. So that's how I have mine set up. So let's show you guys how to do this real quick. So what are you gonna do? Go to create new list, my test. Oops, there you go. I'm gonna save it. This is now a new uh, watch list and it shows up right there. So if I go over here, I can add some stuff to it. Let's see, BTC, right? Now, if you go over here, you can see all the different BTCs that exist. Some of these are actually actual companies. So you need to clarify on here what exactly BTC you're looking for. You can, crypt, you can uh, click it right here to know it's all crypto, okay? And these are all cryptocurrencies, but you're also gonna have euros and perpetual and things like that. If you're using that, great. But more than likely, if you're in this video, all you want to do is do USD, right? So you go back over here, and these are all the BTC USD pairings. And even now, we still have so many options. Why? Because uh, because uh, TradingView takes all these different exchange information and puts it into this. So it's an incredible, incredible amount of information that TradingView takes in and then it gives you an actual chart that you can base it off of. So each of these charts is different. Uh, I'm gonna show you real quick. Let's do the Bitstamp one and I will do the, let's do a really good one. Let's do something like a really, sm a really small exchange. Um, I don't know, what, no, 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 that's wrong. Let's do that and, wait, what is going on? Why is this not working? Bit can, oh, there we go, all right. I don't know what just happened there. 
and Bible. That's a pretty good one. So now that we have two different ones, right? These are I, these are the exact same coin, but they're going to have different prices, different price action because they're different exchanges, right? We talked about that as well. We're going to click right here at full featured chart. Okay, full featured chart has popped up. Okay, and we're going to go over here. This is the Bitstamp one that I actually do use all the time, and I can go over here to the Bybit one, which I don't use all the time, so it should be basically clean. Yep, there it is. All right. Obviously, we do have some action on here because I do chart a lot on a lot of exchanges. So I have different uh, coins all over the place. However, as you see, these two these two charts, if they were clean, is pretty dang similar, right? However, there are some differences on the exchanges. You guys can see for one, the volume is different. Okay, you have massive volume profile differences on here, um, depending upon what's going on. So. This one had massive volume here. This one did not, okay? Like, that is what it is. But if you're trading upon volume, this amount of volume is actually really important. So you wanna make sure that you're using a uh, uh, an exchange that has a, a volume profile that matches the rest of the market. Um, so you have to be careful on that. So two different charts, very similar, but you know what I mean? So I hope that makes sense on there. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Go back over here. Anything else I'm really mentioning on here? Um, what else you can do on here is you can create, I can find it real quick. Um, watch list. How is this set up? Oh, there it is. All right. So now it makes a list for all your blue tagged ones. So um, you can go in here and rename it, I'm sure. I don't know how. There it is. Rename. Awesome. So test list. There you go. So now anytime you anytime you tag these, so if you go in here and I want to tag, I'll go BTC, I'll tag it as blue. Then when I go over here to my test list, it'll pop up here. Right? That, that's basically it, guys. So if you want a to further categorize it based upon different things that you have going on, like I have my active trades and my current watch list on two different uh sort of like colors, and it brings up two different sections. I can click on it and it instantaneously goes to it. Pretty freaking neat. Um, but yeah, really, really awesome stuff. So there's our test list right here. We have our new little watch list up here. I think that's what they call it. Watch list, I'm assuming. And you can categorize it even further um, at a snapshot. All this stuff over here, I'm not going to go over. Okay, I'm not going to because I think it's going to make this video way too long. If you really want to dive in here and learn more about this, definitely go in. This, this program does so much it will blow your mind i promise you i've been training for four years and i'm still finding out cool stuff it does um all right so let's go back over here to my usd pairings right i'm just going to use this one for now we've already had all that set up so you can go through here and see how you know you you click around and you can switch over to different ones so that's how that is done at the very top you can search for new ones from this point right here you can search for anything guys it's absolutely incredible it'll blow your mind all the stuff you have on here um yeah you can separate it out etc it's pretty neat so you can search for anything there uh, make sure to type in there like bt or uh litecoin if you want to search for litecoin you gotta put ltc usd right so i'll show you that real quick ltc litecoin if you want to do usd it shows up all the usd pairings if you go in here and say uh, btc it's going to show up the Bitcoin pairing. If you want to do Litecoin Ethereum, there you go, right there. Okay, that's how it works. So Litecoin to Ethereum or Litecoin to that. So then that's how that works. So um, yeah, that's how you search for stuff. Pretty simple. If you want to add it to a list, you can do it right here. Neat. Over here, you have your, your time frames. This is how you change how much time is in each one of these candles. So this is a one hour chart, right? So I think I already went over this in a video, so I'm not gonna touch on it too much, but like over here is a weekly chart. So um, this week includes all the stuff that happened in this, all this entire time frame, right? Um, and so these last four candles all show up in this four hour candle, right? Um, and it shows your, your candle close and things like that. I think I went over this already, so I'm not gonna touch on it too much. So time frames, that's how you change it. Uh, if you wanna adjust your candles themselves, you can actually make them different um cool personally i'm good i don't really want to do that but if you want cool right um i'm definitely going to be using this as i'm used to uh and i and i also it, it very clear it clarifies all my breakers and things like that so this is what i personally use you guys can do whatever you want right 
you go to the compare deal, you can actually compare different uh, different charts to the same one. And actually, I'm going to do this real quick. Let's see if I can compare a different one. This is Binance. So if I go to band on Coinbase, I'll bet you money it's going to be similar, but it's going to be different. Let's see. Look at that. All right. So this is band on Binance, the top one, and then band on Coinbase, the bottom one. So you can see how the Coinbase one is continuously trading a little bit lower than the, um, than the Binance one. Is there an opportunity for you to do some uh, some arbitrage? Yeah, makes sense. So this is actually a good opportunity for you to find out. If, if Coinbase is trading so much lower than the, uh, the Binance one, could you buy there and sell there? Yeah, of course. Now, obviously, other ways you can look at this is you can also go and find other ones like, uh, let's get rid of that real quick. There it is. Uh, you can also find other charts that look similar. Um, can I give any examples right now? I guess sort of what I'm thinking of. How about this? I got a good one. Let's go over to Bennett Bit BTC. Let's go to ZEC BTC, right? And then I'm gonna go over here to um, find it real quick. Oh, compare to EOS. Oh no, how about this? ETC BTC. There you go. I like this. I'm gonna do this as a new pane, okay? And you can see how similar. I'm gonna drop this down here, drop that one down, and you can see what I'm expecting based upon ETC. So if you zoom out to a high time frame, you can see how similar these charts are, right? This is the ETC BTC, this is CEC BTC. You see how that works, right? So you can see this is what my expectations are. ETC is basically ahead of ZEC. That's what my expectations are. I would not be able to really see this chart unless I use the compare feature. So I hope that makes sense. Pretty neat to try to compare coins, find fractals, things that look similar and be able to project what you expect in the future for it. So pretty neat, right? All right, really cool thing. Get rid of that. Indicators, I love my indicators. So the two indicators that I always have on is my 200 moving average, um, and I also have my volume on. Those are the two I like. I absolutely have to have, and also RSI. Those are the three, and we will go over those in a lot of detail in the videos where it applies to. I'm gonna go over each indicator in a different video and show you exactly how to use it. That will happen soon. Immediately after this video, I'm gonna start recording the one for the moving averages, okay? So it's gonna happen. Just be patient with me. So we will go over in extreme detail what each one of the indicators I use and how to use them. But this is how you actually activate those indicators. You go over here and you search moving average, right? Right there, look, it's too easy. You even have the uh, exponential, the weighted, et cetera. You can go over here to volume, right? Volume right there. You can go over here to my obviously my favorites that I like are right there. You can go into Bollinger Bands. You can go into uh, I, I don't know guys. There's like, there's so many. Also, if you can find any scripts you want to use, I know some people do like using scripts that other people make. Um, yeah, that's I'm assuming this is how you do it right here. I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I've never done it before. I like my strategy. I know it works, so I keep with what I'm doing. But um, understand this is this is how you want to go in there really figure that stuff out. Um, financials, no clue. Next, templates. Uh, there's some cool templates in here that you can add into your uh, your, uh, your chart. I don't do all that because I have my own strategy and it works for me, so I don't really worry about that. Next, alerts. If I have a specific alert that I want to get notified, and it will actually apply on, it will show up on my phone, an email, um, a pop up or something like that, right? It will actually pop up on the down on the bottom over here, showing, hey, ZEC has crossed. 0 0.0065 something, yada, 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 right? And you have all these ones. You can go all these different conditions. You go to the chart and you go on here and you say the moving average has crossed over. That's a pretty important one, right? So the moving average has crossed up um, or moving, yeah, there, there you go. I, I can't even talk today. Moving, yeah, ZEC has crossed over moving average um, once per bar close, right? I wanna know whenever it closes above the 200 moving average, and I want to get notified on pop-up, email, and I want to on sound, email to SMS, all that stuff. And I can name it and all this other cool stuff. Pretty neat, right? And it will tell me what's going on. Um, I don't use this very often, honestly. I probably should, and I just got lazy. But I used to back in the day. Really, really cool stuff. That's alerts. 
uh, replay. What you can do is you can go back here and see where it used to be. And then you can basically see how things played out. So if you like this, oh, I'm sorry, there you go. You can play it. You can watch these candles go. Oh, it's going way too slow for me. Let's speed up. All right, update, update, update. It's replaying exactly how it used to back in the day. And you see how it takes off. So if you want to play a game with yourself and try to predict when that's going to go up or down or whatever, I guess you can do that. I don't really do that. I don't really use this option, but it's definitely a thing. Uh, undo button right there. Um, over here, you can select your layout. So if you have multiple multiple screens or if you want to put multiple charts on the same screen, you can do that. So I can put a chart here, chart here, chart here, and I can update each one. Pretty freaking neat. So uh, get rid of that. I want my one. Um, let's see. Over here. Um, you can save it, you can upload it, all that cool stuff. You have your options. If you wanna make this chart really nice and pretty, this is the place to do it. So you have all your symbols, you can make all this stuff really cool. Lots and lots of options, lots of things you can do. Um, yeah, all, all this stuff's really neat. That being said, I'm pretty basic. I really haven't went here and fixed it at all. I just use the default stuff. I don't know, guys. I'm not about all the, all the making things pretty. I just go with what I got. Um, if I wanna do a full screen right there, close it back out. If I want to take a snapshot, right? If I want to post it in my group, I do this all the time. I'll go in here, I'll save the image, save it as, and I'll post it. Or I can just copy the link itself and you can just post it somewhere and it will pop up uh, with the link directly to the chart. Uh, both are options and publish. If you want to publish the idea, I mean, you can do that if you want to get famous on here. Eh, whatever, I don't really don't care. Um, all right, on this side, now I have other stuff. Um, none of that is too important. You can rename it if you want. That being said, not really for me. Um, Go over here, all these different things do lots and lots of different things, all right? These are, these are it gets really, really convoluted and very uh, and very in-depth very quickly. There's a lot of stuff you can do on here. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go over all of these because there's a lot. What I'm gonna do instead is whenever it's time for that particular video to go over these particular things, I'm going to demonstrate it on those videos, okay? Um, on why I use it, when I use it, et cetera. Um, down here, you can measure certain certain things. So you can say like from here to here, it had 308 days and it went down 73%, which is, yeah, that, that amount, right? So there you go, right? Pretty neat. Um, get rid of that. Oh, there you go. All right, awesome. You zoom in. There you go. Zoom in on chart, right? Um, zoom out. Perfect. You guys see that? Too easy. Magnet this is actually a pretty important tool. You have a strong magnet and weak magnet. What that means is that the prime, the, the whatever indicator you're using will, will automatically grab it. See, I'm way over here because I have a strong magnet on. It will go to the closest thing that makes sense. Okay. I have to be way up here for that magnet to actually detach. Right. So there you go. If you go to a weak magnet, you can pull it pretty easily. Not as strong. Okay. Um, and if you have no magnet, then I can go in here and move this thing however I want. Nothing's gonna stop, right? So it depends on what you're doing. I like using the magnet, usually the strong magnet, because I think closes and candle tops or like the wicks, the top of the wicks off the candle closes are very important. So I like to grab those for the most part. Yeah, I think so. So usually I'd say that I'll leave the uh, the magnet on. Uh, drawing mode, lock drawing tools, hide all drawings. All right, guys, like pretty similar, not too much on here. So, what else am I missing? There is information about them on here. Uh, if I can find it real quick, stock screener. There's a lot of cool stuff on here, guys. Oh, uh, this is actually pretty important. If you wanna go over here, I don't do this as much as I used to, uh, but what you can do is you can do what's called inverting the scale. And what that means is it, it basically checks your bias to see if you're actually feel the same way about it. Uh, for instance, Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and zoom in real quick. My bias, ooh, that's a ugly chart at this point. All right, this is better. My bias is that we're going to continue going, uh, we're going to continue going down. Now, if I want to try to check my bias, I can go over here to the invert scale and it flips the chart on itself. And then I'm going to look at itself and say, do I think this is still going to continue down, which in this chart be up, right? It gives me a different perspective and it's really common. A lot of traders do it just to make sure that they really do feel the way. And I, I think this still makes sense to me. So I still think that this is an impulsive movement. We have our impulse up. We have our corrective down. Now another impulsive. I think this is still a very highly important level 
yeah, that's simply like a very important level right there. So I think this is ultimately the target uh, based upon this invert chart. I think it still makes sense. Um, and I think that if we were to lose like this level to the downside, I think that'd be pretty significant. Yeah, there you go. And that coincides exactly with what my normal truck says. So all that makes sense, right? There we go, we're back to, back to normal. Um, auto is a way to where it basically adjusts when you're scrolling around, it will automatically adjust it for you, okay? Uh, so if I do that on auto, it will go there and it automatically adjusts it for me. Pretty neat. Um, however, if you don't wanna use it, cool. Percentage is basically a percentage of the total amount. I really don't mess that too much. You can change the time and everything on there. Log charts are actually really important when you're dealing with something on long time frames. I'll give you an example real quick. Go to the BTC pairing. Go to, you know what? This works. ETC. Okay. If I go to the normal chart, you can see how these are not even touching anywhere near it, right? But if I go to the log chart, these things obviously have a lot of confluence, especially if you go to something like ZEC. Oh, I messed up my chart, didn't I? That sucks. Was it ZEC? EOS. My bad. I'm so sorry, guys. There we are. All right. So log chart. Touch, 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 touch. Broke above. Take off the log chart. You see how incredibly messed up that is. Um, also, log chart is really useful if you're looking for something that's, if you're looking at something that's really, really hard to look at. Like Doge. This thing, this chart is a monster. It's really, really hard to try to see what's going on. A lot of it going on, right? It's just really, really hard because this is the price way down here. That entire thing is just nothing, right? So instead what I can do is click on log and it makes this chart a lot more readable. You see how that works? So um, log charts will help you create different, uh, different trend lines and they're also good to, uh, to look at charts that have expanded very, very rapidly. Um, so yeah, awesome. Log charts are great to look at for the BTC pairing, or not BTC, USD pairings on a lot of crypto, especially altcoins, because they move extremely rapidly in either direction. So um, what else are we going to go over, guys? I think that's honestly, I think that's honestly about it for this video. So I am going to touch on one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and end it. So on these, on these indicators, you are looking for something called confluence, okay? Confluence. What that means is I'm going to give you many, many indicators over the next couple of weeks, okay? These indicators are going to be um, independent of each other. So a breaker may tell you one thing, but the RSI slash divergences may tell you something else. What you're looking for is you're trying to see if uh, multiple indicators tell you the same thing. Right, like for instance, this is Doge, right? It's a good example, actually. I didn't mean on being here, but it works. This is a bearish divergence. You don't have to know that now, we'll go over it later, but that is a bearish divergence very clearly on the daily. This is high volume. This is not. So this was clearly impulsive. This was impulsive, but not as impulsive. That means we're losing strength. So the bearish divergence and the decrease in volume both told me, hey, we're about to go down, right? That's confluence. They both work together. Now, there's also possibilities where you have indicators, some are bullish, some are bearish. That happens all the time. When you deal with a ton of indicators, you're going to have a lot of times where they overlap with each other. Your job as a trader is to try to understand which one's more important in this particular case. That's the part that takes the experience. It's, it's not easy. There's not a clear answer. It's not, it's not clear cut. So if I go over 10 indicators and like five or uh, like, let's say eight are bullish and two are bearish, right? More than likely those eight that are bullish are going to win. However, what if those two that were bearish were super important for this particular case, right? Those are things you have to consider. So um, there's a lot to it. I know that sounds crazy, but basically what I'm looking for is confluence is very important. You want to have uh, more indicators that tell you something, the more likely you are to be right. Um, in any sort of trade, you always have to have a level of confidence um, because trades don't always go the way you're hoping. And if half the indicators say one way, half the indicators say the other way, do you have any confluence? Not necessarily, right? Um, and you have to level, you have to get an idea. I am 
60% confident this is going to work, or I am 80% confident it's going to work, right? And you need to really be honest with yourself so that if it, so that you can adjust your risk to reward appropriately, right? And that those are very important. I go over in the risk strategy section, so I'm not going to go over too much. Just understand, or the risk management section, so I'm not going to go over too much. Just understand that like, those are very important keys you must always understand um, before you do dive in on this thing. So um, we already went over time frames. I think that's basically it. So the next video, like I mentioned, will be over the moving average, which is one of the strongest indicators. And I wanted to start with that because that's the one that is the easiest one to know, easiest one to learn. And uh, it, it's just, it's cheating. It's cheating and I will show you why. It's incredible how powerful this indicator is on telling you whether or not a chart will go up or down. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video. And like always, I will uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.